Hello dear viewers, uh, this is again so Fide Master Sohan Fadke live from Mumbai for the third part of this Monday mornings attack, Monday attacking mornings with me sort of like a tea snack or a semi breakfast time eh? so in the first two episodes we did about opening the window slide the second one was the pin and the third part we are going to do is called closing the doors so closing the doors means when you go for a checkmate the king tries to escape so basically we just cut the escaping route and we just checkmate the king so it's let me tell you one thing about closing the doors there are two ways to checkmate a king one is like a running mate check 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 and with all the drama finally the king gets mated and the second one is a classy approach it's about no mess just close the escaping doors the next move it's about to get checkmate as you can see in some movies where the hero chases the villain with a lot of drama and finally he gets he caught he, he gets that chance so instead of going with all that drama there is also one way and that is cutting the king's escape route so we'll start with some basic ones or maybe say easy ones and slowly slowly you will get some nice positions along the this series okay it's a uh, black stone to play what do you think black should play i think uh, you shouldn't take much time to find this out from black okay queen a1 then king d2 and you can pretend like queen b2 okay but this is not the part right checkmate is possible and we cut the king's door by the move rook e2 with a simple move idea queen a1 mate and the bishop has to take there is no way and now again we cover the square with knight e4 and now queen a1 is mate nobody can stop it right so just by simple moves of just cutting the king's escape via d2 black checkmates the king with no drama and a classy checkmate on a1 so sometimes you have to do the other way sometimes you can't close the escaping doors we you have to do the hard work of check 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 chase the king and finally get him but if it is possible without drama then you can definitely opt for that so rookie 2 is a classy way all right let's move on to the next one okay this is black to play and uh, okay you have to not just think about that one idea which we are discussing in the video i am just trying to help you with your overall attacking play which i which all my this 20 years of chess career i am very uh, i mean uh, attracted to the beautiful checkmates and this attacking themes and uh, somehow i am able to give some titles to that themes which actually helped me in my own games as well maybe in the further episodes i'm going to show you my own games where in my game with that uh, just title just blinked to my mind and i say yes this is the time okay let's uh, get on to this position you can see a beautiful bishop white is lacking a light square bishop so naturally white feels very insecure you have nice queen you have a beautiful rook but you have to calculate some lines how should black checkmate white king it is possible so some calculation is needed let me remove the marks easy for you yeah so the move is bishop f3 check okay bishop h3 is logical nothing wrong with that but the problem is after king g1 you need someone down the line to mate so queen g4 you play and white can just play queen d3 in protecting f3 so things are not going far so we need something more powerful and direct bishop f3 check okay king g1 then queen h3 just wins the game so he has to take king f3 so the number one closing door if you play queen f5 or g4 you will go back so first queen h3 so the king cannot go back right so okay what is the next threat of black 
Black actually is 90% sure what is he's going to play, but he is he is in the mind of saying, yeah, the king on f3 is very very uncomfortably stuck on f3 that something will happen by the rook or the queen. Okay, white tries to cover the light squares, which are very critical to some extent. So after queen d3, black has to push or drag the king out. Furthermore, king f4. So black has successfully drawn from king g2 to king f4 with success. So it's now the fish in the pond and you have to catch it well, otherwise it can be a little slippery to catch him. So what is the next move? Okay, queen h5. So simple move, queen g5. Again, what I'm trying to say is chess is a very beautiful game and complicated as well. Sometimes you have to find very difficult moves and sometimes things are so easy like uh, it gives an illusion like is chess that easy? I mean playing bishop f3 needed some calculation. Then queen h3 also was okay. And here again if you look for something dramatic like bishop g5, bishop e5, it is maybe boss bishop g5 is wrong but bishop e5 is yeah it's possible what's wrong. But Rather than going for all this drama, again a simple chess move, queen h5, queen, and queen g5 is just made. So white has to stop with queen f5, oops. Okay, be careful, don't play queen c, king g4 and the king will escape. And now we just a gentle push. White's position was hanging on the edge. We just push him gently and after this, this is just checkmate right so by playing queen h3 we close the doors no more escaping allowed and after further moves with a simple move queen h5 checkmate we were able to deliver the checkmate okay let's move, move on to the next one okay this is a very interesting position where uh, white king is stuck on f1 Queen has already, I mean, locked on e1, and it, it looks like, as I say, helping stones. It's in a white's army, but playing from black side. I mean, the king would love to go to d2 and escape, but he is stuck with his own forces. I call them as helping stones. Okay, so it's black turn to play. Black can try like queen h3, knight h3. But the king escapes, like knight h3, e3. Okay, you can give me a check, no worries, king e2. So this escaping door is what we have to take care. So can black take majors against white's king escape? Pause for few, a minute or two. Yeah. Closing the doors will definitely hit the right move in a flash. The move is rook to e3. Okay, the rook doesn't do much, but rook just blocks the escaping door. It's just like putting one whole rock in just outside the door of the king's escape. And now the king cannot escape. He's going to suffocate on f1. So rook e3, idea is not at all to play maybe rook f3 is a bonus but the main idea is just a knight h3 actually <laughs> and if he plays queen d2 maybe still i think we can go with knight h3 and queen g1 is a mate i mean you can't do anything about it you can't run again helping stone yeah queen g1 is mate of course rook f3 is also an idea like rook f3 is easier as well but you get total control but the main this rook f3 is an additional point main point was to shut white's e3 by playing rook e3 himself okay i hope you got idea like how the closing doors can be so effective rather than going for a brutal king chase sometimes just smartly close the door okay one more example this is this is very simple but I, I somehow like this example because I have given this position to so many of my students. Some of them were not able to solve to my surprise and some were have to taken very long time 
I mean, this position doesn't deserve to take that much long time. If you know that closing door stuff, I mean, right now I'm sure you will solve this within a minute. But uh, yeah, seriously, my students struggle to solve this. So that's why I have chosen this example. It's white to play. How should white win? Okay, with closing the doors, I think you must have got it. Rook takes a5 check. King takes a5. Close the doors with bishop c5. And rook a3 is made. Okay, just rook e1 is just non watch check and nobody can stop rook a3. So some things are very easy if you study them in a proper manner. I mean, if you can make titles, it's really good. I mean, uh, the the reason I am so much interested in titles because it has a small influence on Sherlock Holmes. I mean, just uh, outside this stuff, uh, Watson was writing this Sherlock Holmes story and Sherlock Holmes was very keen about what is he writing. And uh, Watson said, are you really interested in my stories? The Sherlock Holmes said, no, but I am interested in titles. Because title somehow defines the content. At the same time, title will uh, bring you the idea in a flash. So the closing the doors, maybe you are going from a position. Somehow you will come across, ah, rather than king chase, what about closing the doors? Yeah, it will help. All right, let's move on to the next one. And now we are coming across to the advanced stuff of closing the doors. Okay, this one is little easy. I, uh, after that, we will do an advanced one. It's wide to play. And I'm sure you must get this. The queen on h4 is under attack, the knight on is under attack, so naturally you demand something direct. So, white should play rook g7. Rook at 7 is mate, so you take, queen g5 check, king f8, and rather than going for a brutal king chase, the elegant way to stop all this Rook e1. <laughs> Knight at 7 is winning, queen at 6 is winning. So after a small drama with rook g7, king g7 and queen g5, you should be calm enough to catch this king right on f8 rather than chasing with queen at 6 and giving series of check and rook e1 with two checkmates by the way. Knight at 7 and queen at 6. White wins the game. Okay, time for some uh, slightly advanced stuff. I won't say advanced, but uh, it's really the main calculation will come into play other than your tactical idea. See, intuition will help you to bring the idea, but the calculation will literally uh, take you there where you actually want and uh, make things possible for you. So if you have combination of intuition and calculation, you are a very powerful player. Okay, why to play? Somehow this king is stuck, this queen and white has all the dreams and right to win the game. So you have to calculate this line by the way. If you want real training, I think I ask you to calculate till the end please. I mean till the last move with some analysis again at your hand. Uh, uh, others, if you just want to enjoy the closing the doors, I will just help you. So if you want to think, you can pause, but uh, I will just show you. Rook takes g6 check. Okay, if he takes, then queen h5 is made, so he has to take. Again, we have this, this is a king we have to ca watch out for. Queen e3 check. If he takes, then queen g5 is made. If he goes to h7, Okay, window slide open. <laughs> so everything will come together if you can just try to concentrate. Queen e7 check, king at 6. Now the dragging the king out, king at 7. Check this and queen g6 and king f4. And I'm very sure uh, you can get to this position in your mind, by the way, without moving pieces. This is the position where people start to like uh, in a game like people just uh, look here and there, look at the clock and they are like little bit confused and because they are nervous they want to quickly get uh, this king checkmated, right? The king on f4. 
But you can go with the idea of queen g5, but the king will escape like this. And you have to pay attention that black is attacking a1 at the same time he is eyeing that f2 pawn. And also this f8 rook is little mischievous and is also helping the queen on b2. So we have to be careful. You can't be complacent like white is winning, the king on a4 should be checkmated. You have to find the right way. So let's start with the easy one, g3 check. And after king f3, I'm sorry to say now black is safe because f2 pawn is under attack. And after say queen h5, black runs with king e4. And this is exactly not what we want, right? We want this king on f4 to be checkmated on this file only. So what do you think should be the move? Closing the doors. Here, in this position, after move 6, closing the door idea come. Okay, rook e1 is also one idea. But somehow I, I'm, I don't like this idea of playing queen e2, bishop e2, somehow. Maybe this is also fine. But the more uh, classy one is rook to d1. It looks very difficult to find rook d1 because what is this rook doing? Rook e1 is very logical. It cuts the king, right? But rook d1, you'll see the beautiful idea of rook d1. Idea is no matter what black does, it doesn't matter whether you play queen e2, queen c2, it doesn't matter, queen, e, queen c2. Now you just play g3, he goes here, king f3, then you play queen h5, and uh, after this, uh, you just play queen e5 check. Queen f3, oh wait, uh, something went wrong here. Queen h5. Yeah, okay. Just uh, this, this is just checkmate. <laughs> Queen g4 is mate. I mean, rook f4 just take on f4. So this is cutting the king. And if in this situation, if black goes rook g8 attacking the queen, then you can just play g3 check, queen f5 check, and now queen h5 check. And thanks to this rook, it doesn't allow this d3 escape. So cutting the d3 escape was a little subtle. I mean, for me, it was a little tricky to find. Because rook e1 looks more natural, rook d1 is little more deep. But anyways, rook e1 is also not bad. Rook e1 also, I think, should be winning, but rook d1 is little bit more deeper. Okay, so we conclude this, our third episode on closing the doors. I am sure apart from this uh, closing the doors, I was able to contribute something interesting as well in terms of attack. And uh, till the next time, till the next Monday, see you. Bye-bye.